you know, how can a company with 13 billion in revenues make 1.4 trillion of spend commitments? You know, and 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 you've heard the criticism, First Sam. Of all, we're doing well more revenue than that. Second of yeah. all, Brad, if you want to sell your shares, I'll find you a buyer. <laughs> I, I just. OpenAI is expected to lose $10 billion this year, burn through $115 billion by 2029, and yet it's valued at $500 billion. A company that's never turned a profit now carrying a $1.4 trillion in compute commitments is somehow being treated as too big to fail. The numbers sound insane, and yet they might actually be perfectly logical. The company recently said it's tracking above $20 billion annualized revenue run rate and aiming for hundreds of billions by 2030. Again, big number, big ambition. So, is OpenAI destined to fail, or is this the kind of company that gets stronger every time people predict the opposite. There was a backlash this week, and hit, this is what it was. OpenAI wants a government bailout, unquote. Sam Altman's response was quite blunt. If we screw up and can't fix it, we should fail, end quote. The clarification to all of that, OpenAI isn't asking for US guarantees on its data centers. What Altman did endorse is this. Governments building and owning their own AI infrastructure, a strategic compute reserve with the upside flowing to the public, not to private firms. This context matters because OpenAI is signing what may be the most aggressive AI infrastructure plan on Earth. About $1.4 trillion of commitments over, well, the next eight years. And they're actually still compute constrained today. More GPUs is equal to more features, more revenue, more science. This isn't one pipe. It's actually a mesh. Microsoft for core backbone and revenue share. NVIDIA and AMD for GPUs. TSMC slash Intel for fabs. Oracle for dense training clusters. And now AWS with a multi-year deal to stand up, well, Blackwell class capacity. So let's actually call it what it is. Global compute diversification. If one artery clogs, another one pumps. Small LLMs are actually everywhere. They're cheap, nimble, and great for narrow tasks. But what OpenAI is actually betting on isn't small. It's frontier capability code agents that can actually run autonomously for days. Robotics that adapt in real time. New consumer devices and the biggest one yet, which is AI that automates scientific discovery. Those don't actually run on pocket change. They actually run on massive, cheap, reliable compute. And this is where the world's fault lines are actually starting to show. Just this week, China's moonshot AI dropped a bombshell. It's actually new model Kimi K2 thinking outperformed GPT-5 and Claude 4.5 Sonnet in key reasoning and coding benchmarks, including Humanity's Last Exam, Browse Comp, and SWE Bench Verified. Built on a trillion parameter architecture, K2 activates 32 billion per inference, supports a 256k token context window, and can run 300 sequential tool calls without actually human help. It's not just powerful, it's also cheap. At 60 cents per million tokens for cache misses and $2.5 for output, K2 undercuts GPT-5's $10 output pricing by nearly four times, all while being open source under a modified MIT license. That means, Commercial users in China can build on it, fork it, or even resell it for free with attribution. Meanwhile, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang has softened his earlier warning that actually read something like this. China will win the AI race, end quote. Now saying Beijing is nanoseconds behind America, end quote again. But the subtext is quite clear. Energy costs, regulation, and compute access will decide 
who leads the next phase of AI. With NVIDIA's chips effectively frozen out of China, the race isn't just about who has the biggest model. It's actually about who can afford to run it at scale. And that's why OpenAI's compute strategy, which is massive, distributed, and vertically integrated, still matters. Because while small models thrive in isolation, frontier intelligence demands frontier infrastructure. When Moonshot AI is deploying trillion parameter open models and Microsoft is investing billions into AI data centers, OpenAI can't afford to scale back. Not if it actually wants to stay the benchmark everyone else measures against. Chips are only half the story. Power actually is the bottleneck. Even hyperscalers are saying it. You can have the GPUs and still be stuck waiting for watts and warm shells. That's why Altman's National compute reserve idea resonates. Treat compute like a public utility for the next economy. That's why you're seeing space grade ideas on the table. We covered this earlier on front page. Google's new project, if you remember, Suncatcher proposes space based data centers, TPUs, on solar powered satellites soaking up near continuous sunlight. Far higher productivity than ground panels stitched together with ultra-high throughput optical links, radiation-hardened silicon, and prototype launches with planet planned by 2027. The thesis for all of this is this. If energy and land constrain AI on Earth, orbit might be the next compute zone. No, seriously. Amazon and others are actually already exploring similar off-world architectures, and startups are already testing GPU compute in orbit. The net-net is this. The scramble for cheap, abundant, reliable power explains pretty much everything, from national compute reserves on the ground to literal data centers in space. Underneath it all is the headline, which is a resilient operating story. Exclusive, stateless APIs on Azure, a long runway on revenue share, and Microsoft shipping co-pilot across its entire stack. The translation to this is, well, this. Distribution plus infrastructure plus product moving in lockstep, rare in technology. OpenAI India Public Policy and Partnerships Lead Pragya Mishra recently said this, more logos from India soon, end quote. Clearly, India is the rocket booster. Developers are surging, enterprise pilots are accelerating, and the Dev Day exchange in Bengaluru signaled where distribution, well, goes next. OpenAI literally told the room, some of the best builders in India are here, end quote. Names like Razorpay, Healthify, InVideo, Elastic Devs, Emergent, Find, Vahan.ai, Eternal, which is Zomato, that's actually quite a go-to market engine. Skeptics, of course, ask, how do you fund $1.4 trillion with today's revenues? Good question. OpenAI's answer is this, grow revenue aggressively, sell AI cloud slash compute more directly, expand enterprise, launch devices slash robotics, and unlock scientific research and development value creation. Risky? Yes. But the company argues the bigger the risk is under building compute and missing the window. You get foreign compute dependence, slower domestic innovation, and an uneven map where a few regions own the value chain. You also force every private player to chase the same scarce power and land, driving costs up, throttling capability down. So, the question is, is OpenAI destined to fail. Well, here's the honest read from the couch. Failure is possible. That's what actually makes the bet real. But with revenue compounding, multi-cloud supply lines, public sector compute on the table, and the India developer flywheel spinning, the center of gravity still tilts towards build. OpenAI's chief, Sam Altman, says this, if we screw up and can't fix it, we should fail. End quote. Well, with this much talent, capital, and distribution aligning, can the world even afford for it to? That is the question. Please do let us know what you think in the comments below.